All right, what everyone was waiting for, a lolly sim update. I've been trying some things out, uh, just trying to get it. Not necessarily, well, I'm working towards a version two and, and I thought I'd try out some ideas and add some stuff. So new things right off the bat is um, wait options, which is super useful now that uh, we've got a full week of time instead of just a day cycle. And you notice the time is running itself now. Uh, it used to be based on actions. Now it moves when I use the wait. I, it moves when you move on the map down here, travel time. Um, and uh, But other than that, it moves itself. And you can sign it, kind of see it um, changing. Uh, the positions of characters on this brand new map uh, used to just be a location list. And this is where most of my uh, work has been going and, and testing out sort of new ideas. Um, this thing is cool. Now it's not just a few static uh, characters in, in places that I've pre-designed. Now they sort of uh, came up with a whole display. So it's based on this map over here and then I sort of map out based on based on distance obviously and as and uh, sort of the angle from the player position to the character positions to figure out where they should be here in the sort of x coordinates that's wait, what were you doing down there <laughs> all right there's still some bugs apparently although possibly that's just because i'm recording but so uh implementing this whole map thing there's a lot more going on than just this although this is pretty cool in itself so what i've what i've done is uh these characters are not moving randomly they are moving uh according to a schedule and it used to be that i designed the whole schedule myself by hand the same as what i do on of power lines which i haven't worked on in ages um but uh so i've decided to try and it's working out pretty nice, is uh, I'm kind of generating schedules instead. So the first thing I do is I write out a schedule for each key position. So the school and the beach and the homes, uh, each person's individual home and, their, and the park. And uh, this guy is at a location called work. For each character, I have a bunch of different positions that they want to go to positions that they know about and want to be at at certain times in the week and so I write down key points in the week where they uh, really want to be at a place or don't want to be at a place so like a percentage uh, over the entire week so so instead of being like a definitive schedule it's a probabilistic schedule so that on its face isn't much because um, it would generate the same schedule each time if I'm just grabbing if I'm just blending together the different location uh, desires and then and then sh shitting out a, a schedule. So on top of that, there's also sort of like relationship is one thing that I use when generating the schedules. So um, so like if uh, characters are friends, then they will kind of clump together. They'll they'll rank a location higher based on whether their friend wants to be there as well. Um, so that's how you keep getting uh, them going in unison to places. And so there's a really convoluted a thing where I have multiple passes of of uh, first, you know, generating what they want and then what their friends want and then waiting themselves based on that. And then I end up with a huge data set of places over time, over the entire week. And then I prune that down to like the hot spots, the highs and lows. And that's how I generate a schedule for the entire week. And sort of I have to redo that anytime that uh, certain states change, like their relationships with one another. There's no interacting in this version just yet. Well, there kind of is. Um, but uh, it doesn't really work quite well. Um, but... So what I'm going to do is when you interact with a character, I have them redo their the schedule for themselves based on their new stats and uh, schedules for everyone else as a as a result of relationships. And then I also have to like translate it because I'm doing that based on like home, school, beach, park. Um, 
but then I translate it into the XY coordinates for this map. And uh, yeah, it's working pretty nice and it's a pretty complicated idea that I was uh, happy to work on, try it out. I might use it on other projects as well. Um, uh, an another thing is uh, uh, I ran into is was uh, I originally I had it so I would just set the points like this is my home, this is the park, this is the XY for the beach. Um, but then I realized they were sort of going into the same location all the time, um, sort of clumping too much together because there's only one point. And I first was just going to change that based on distance, like you could randomly pick a distance, but then they kind of still, they end up in circles and a lot of these places are not circles, um, like the school uh, and the park kind of, it kind of maybe would work in a circle, but I decided I would try and um, create polygon that sort of fit the actual area and then uh, randomly select XY coordinates within the location. And that was a lot harder than I first suspected, uh, mainly because Flash, like, uh, Flash is pretty cool. It can uh, generate um, shapes and stuff at runtime uh, with its drawing methods. But I did not know that you cannot uh, hit test them with the shape flag on for some reason. I don't know if this was fixed in a later version of Flash. I'm still using uh, Flash 8. But it could not do that, so I had to run my own uh, point to polygon testing so that I could generate a bunch of... Uh, I sort of like go through each polygon and then uh, add in points. Uh, that they can randomly select and that's the only place that randomness comes in their schedule is picking a, a point within a location polygon um, other than that Jesus look at them all um, they, other than that they uh, everything is uh, deterministic even though it's a probabilistic schedule and uh, that's it that's I think yeah I think that's pretty much everything